Hello, Mario. In this video, we're going to be looking at working out the areas and the volumes of irregular shapes and solids. So to start with, here we have an irregular area or shape, and we're going to work out its area. Okay, so what we need to do now is to do a bit of construction here and divide the area up into equal intervals. It's best if you have an even number of intervals, in this case here, 8, and that will give us an odd number of ordinates, the ordinates being y1 through y9 here. Now, when we do that, divide that up into these things here, we can draw a little line across here where each ordinate meets the irregular line. And that, as you can see there, will, will create uh, some straight lines that approximate or approximate the, the curved line. You can see there's a little bit of give and take here in this one. Um, this one's a little bit up and um, there will be some down. But you can see that it is an approximation as it doesn't accurately follow the curved line. And in fact, we're only drawing the curved line by hand. So again, it's, it's, it's an approximation at all levels. Now what you can see is that by doing this, it creates a little shape here, or a, a shape with regular lines. And this shape is called a trapezium. It has two parallel sides here and here, and um, a distance between them, or a height. <clears throat> and the formula for the area is the half the sum of the parallel sides times the distance between them. In this case here, y1 plus y2 divided by 2 times d. Now if, as you work through this, you can see that you've got y1 here, y2 here, y2 appears again here, y3 and y3 appears again here. So you can see that the each end one, y1 and y9, only appear once if we were looking at the total area, whereas the intermediate ordinates, or the ones in the middle, all appear twice. And we've got a regular distance between them. So we can put this all together and into what is called the trapezoidal rule, uh, and I'll just quickly go down to the formula here and we can have here because we can put D divided by 2 and then we've got Y1 plus Y9 so in, in a bracket here Y1 the two the two end ones plus two times the sum of the intermediate ordinates 2 through 8 as you can see here and you can see how that derives out of out of what I've uh, what I've displayed up there, and that is in effect the trapezoidal rule. And putting it in words, it's the width of the interval divided by two, plus the uh, times the first ordinate plus the last ordinate, plus two times the sum of the remaining ordinates, as I expressed it in words. Now, just to refer to our example here, um, we've got. Uh, D is 15 divided by 2 and then we've got our two end ones 62 and 58 here and then we've got um, 2 times the mid ones 65, 63, 51 so on and so on all the way through and we can work that out and that will give us an area of 7395 square meters because we're working in meters. Now I've prepared this material using a CAD package. So what I'm proposing to do here, just for a moment, is to turn turn on a, a layer where I have actually put a polyline around the area here. Um, and I've put a polyline around it. And I can then just interrogate that. So there's the polyline there that I'm highlighting there. And I can just push here. Uh, quick properties and the quick properties will come up here and I'm just going to put it uh, down here where we can see it and straight away you can see that the area is 7395 7395 so our little uh, formula um, in this instance here is working very well and we have proved that by uh, looking at our 
our area and calc our calculated area agrees with um, with our CAD program. So I'm just going to turn that off uh, for now, and I'll just uh, turn that layer off as well. Um, so that was the areas layer, which um, we'll just get turned off there. We don't need that. And there we are. We can we've got a reasonable sort of uh, handle on the um, trapezoidal rule. Now, the trapezoidal rule was not that good enough for some people. They wanted to go a little bit more accurate. And so they came up, or so came up Simpson's rule, which is considered to be more accurate, a more accurate approximation to the area than the trapezoidal rule. And it's, it's based on uh, polynomials and parabolas and uh, quite complex um, mathematical um, equations but it can be expressed in in this way here as a one-third of the width of the interval um, which D up here 15 as you'll see below um, times the first and the times the sum of the first and the last ordinate which is the similar to the trapezoidal rule plus four times the sum of the even ordinates so the even ordinates would be y2, y4, y6 and y8 plus two times the sum of the remaining ordinates which are the um, would be y3, y5 and y7 and that's all uh, added together as I've written it down here and worked out and I've worked that out um, in this instance here um, quite a few times just as a as a as a reasonable sort of uh, check and uh, what I have found is that um, that we get 7330 meters squared which is a little bit different to the trapezoidal rule and apparently um, according to all of the experts um, is, is more accurate so, but we do need to note that when you're using Simpson's rule, it requires an even number of intervals and an odd number of ordinates. If you have an odd number of intervals and therefore an even number of ordinates, you cannot use Simpson's rule. You need to have, as I've stated there boldly in red, an even number of intervals and an odd number of ordinates. Simpson's rule, as I've said, is considered to be more accurate than the trapezoidal rule. Now, this um, this stuff here, all uh, as it happens, um, it transfers, or it's quite, it's transferable across to volumes. And I'll just uh, turn a layer here on, which uh, shows some formulas as they as they relate to volumes, um, which I've on here and that produces some information over here now the thing about volumes is that instead of in the area situation where we're just using the length of the ordinates in the volume scenario instead of using the length of the ordinate we use the area of the cross section so therefore we've got the area of the cross section which is length times width essentially in most instances um, and then we've got the distance between them so that gives us our our third dimension um, so we've got meters times meters times meters meters cubed and so that would give us our third dimension and therefore our volume now there's two methods again and they're aligned pretty much to the trapezoidal rule um, which is called the end areas method and in the end areas method we um, use the uh, the volume is determined um, by the distance between the cross sections um, plus the first and last area of the first and last cross section plus two times the area of the cross sections in the middle. I've shown it here with ends um, so where n is the number of cross sections. End area method um, is does not you can do that with an even or an odd number of um, sections it doesn't matter so remember that the a is for a cross section and that will be in meters squared and d is the distance between the cross sections so that will be in meters so we get meters squared times meters and that will give us meters cubed or our volume 
Now, the more accurate method, the prismoidal method, um, which is, I've shown here, and is based on Simpson's rule, again, is just replaces Simpson's rule as we did earlier for area um, we replace the length of the um, ordinates with the cross-sectional area of the cross-section so this is a whole series of cross-sections and remember there must be an odd number of cross-sections and an even number of intervals as a consequence of that and I've expressed that here as um, D over 3, the, the distance between the cross sections, and you've got the first and the last, and then you've got 4 times the even cross sections all the way through to uh, N minus 1. So if N was 9, N minus 1 would be 8. So there you would have 2, 4, 6, 8. And then plus 2 times the, the odd. Um, cross section, the odd numbered cross sections were all the way through to n minus 2. So again if n was 7, if you had, uh, uh, sorry if n was 9 you would have uh, 9 cross sections so you would go from a, a cross section 3, 5, 7 and 7. n minus 2, 9 minus 2 would be 7. So we've expressed this in the sort of mathematical convention of using n's and n must be an odd integer. Now the prismoidal method is considered more accurate than the than the than the end areas method. So I've kept this as brief as I can on, on one sheet here and um, in due course I will try to um, do some videos where we can put some of these into, into practice in a, in a surveying context of working out uh, areas and volumes of um, various objects, uh, volumes of stockpiles, banks, um, embankments, um, ponds and that type of thing. So you can look forward to um, some further uh, videos um, where we're going to put uh, the end areas method and the prismoidal method, Simpson's rule, trapezoidal rule into practice in um, as close as we can real life, uh, real life situ situations. So um, there you go something to look forward to.